Hey, how's it going guys? So before we get started, yes, we had a poll to determine which essay style video was next and I wanted to let it cook for a little longer because this topic was actually a close second, which if you didn't know, it was gaining momentum on the first. I think given some more time, uh, we would have ended up having this be the first, but I figured because of the influx of members to our community brought forth from the collab I did with Clemmy Games, I think this would be a great video topic to welcome our newcomers. Expect the how to make good gen 4 remakes or whatever I decide to name it, uh, video soon, but for today we're going to be discussing what constitutes a monster taming game and at what point do we call a game a monster taming game versus a game with monster taming elements. Furthermore, we'll talk a little bit about gatekeeping and reductio when it comes to not having a gate at all. That said, this video is definitely a long time coming, so I'm excited to discuss. Let's do it. So what exactly sets monster taming games apart from other genres? Well, a big part of the monster taming appeal is the wide variety of playable creatures, and I think to an extent, it's a lot easier to put yourself in the shoes of a tamer because, generally speaking, tamers or trainers don't have any sort of special abilities of their own and instead rely on the power of their monsters. A lot of the worlds we see in the genre, whether it be the world of Monster Crown, Nexomon, Poromon, Pokemon, etc., they tend to emulate the real world uh, as if these creatures existed. They're basically our world as it is, plus the monsters rather than an entire fantasy world where certain laws don't apply. Now of course this is a blanketing generalization and doesn't capture the wider range of games, but I do think that it's a big part of the appeal and why Pokemania started in the first place. These are worlds crafted around these creatures and generally speaking feel believable and they make us feel that anyone could become a tamer, anyone could be a Pokemon trainer, etc. Now that said, monster taming in and of itself isn't necessarily a hardline genre in my opinion, and instead is more of a theme of games that can take several other genres as well. Think about it, Pokemon's a JRPG with monster taming, Abomination is a roguelike with monster taming, Skyseeker is a Metroidvania with monster taming. Now there is definitely something to be said about how these games come to be because for example, the Metroidvania genre is typically considered a subsect of platforming. That said, monster taming games typically follow the RPG format. However, in recent times especially, the very notion of what could be considered a monster taming game has been challenged again and again. It's very easy to assume that every taming game is like Pokemon. However, I do believe that's a closed off mindset that lacks the nuance to differentiate the RPG genre from the taming subgenre. Let's take a look at Exhibit A over here, and in my opinion, one of the most important monster taming games as of late due to its ability to make us really take a second look at what exactly a monster tamer is. This game of course is Patch Quest, a monster taming roguelite with metroidvania aspects. Now Patch Quest in and of itself could have easily become the victim of gatekeeping which we will get into a bit, however from what I've seen the monster taming community has actually embraced it with open arms and I think that gives us a little insight onto what a monster taming game can truly be. It's not always an RPG, it's not always turn based battles and you're not always trying to be the very best. Monster taming at its core is a subgenre dedicated to the controlling of various creatures, whether they be animals, uh, actual monsters, demons, uh, or ghosts. And interestingly, there's actually a wide spectrum of games that we either haven't seen or aren't very popular that could really push the genre even further. We could end up seeing games like a monster taming MOBA, an FPS monster tamer, and much more. And because Patch Quest and other games like that have established that the lack of RPG elements needed to acquire the monster taming title isn't a great way to look at it, we could end up seeing a lot more very unique and interesting taming games as a result. Now interestingly, despite this, I have seen some levels of gatekeeping within what could be considered a taming game, and that sort of leads us to the next major theme of this video. How can we strictly define what a monster taming game is in such a way that we have a clear boundary for what it is and what it isn't? With Patch Quest being adopted into the realm of taming games, justifiably so by the way, we can definitely look at other games like Xenoscape, which is a monster taming bullet hell, Creature Keeper, which is basically a monster taming Zelda-like in a way, or even Ploxmons, which is a digital card game. All of these games feature a wide variety of monsters to collect and you can use them for battle, albeit to 
varying degrees. Something very interesting to me is that, for example, I've seen some people debate whether or not Ninth Dawn 3 is a monster taming game, as the monsters are not technically needed to beat the game. However, games like Creature Keeper, where you could totally play with just a player and not the monster, Laxidays, where you also fight alongside your monsters, and again, by the looks of it, it doesn't really look necessary to have them in combat. And once again, as mentioned, Patch Quest, I don't really see these games being questioned in the same light. In all three of these games, you could get by with no monsters, however, monster collecting and utilizing said monsters is the chief focus. Another great example if you're not convinced is Kindred Fates. You're going to have the option to play with no kinfolk, albeit the player character will be wimpy as they stated, but nevertheless the kinfolkless run will be possible. So because of this we could try to say that Kindred Fates doesn't require monsters, therefore it's not a monster taming game, but we all know that's absolutely untrue. You see how it's really hard to define the lines here? Uh, let's go a step further. Ark Survival Evolved is a sandbox survival where you can level up and tame dinosaurs amongst other creatures and utilize their various abilities. I've seen a lot of people say it's not a monster tamer, but when pushed as to why, I haven't seen much of a reason other than that it's because it's a sandbox survival and the monsters aren't technically needed at all times. Which, like we've established, monster taming doesn't exist within the RPG genre solely and is highly malleable and we don't necessarily need monsters all the time to justify the monster taming label. If Ark's monster taming isn't integral enough to the game, at what point do we decide when something is or isn't a monster taming game based on something so loose? I can even take it another step further and talk about Far Cry Primal. This game has a very interesting mechanic in which you can tame monsters to fight for you, uh, be used as mounts, and even to fight other monsters, not just humans. Is this a monster taming game? I mean, judging from what we've discussed here, there is an argument as to why it is, and it's tough to provide a decisive counter argument as to why it's not, given the acceptance of the formerly mentioned title. This may not seem like a big problem, and while gatekeeping can be annoying sometimes, it's not without its uses either. We can keep taking this further to the point of sheer absurdity for the sake of proving a point, and I think you guys will enjoy the logic here. Alright, so time for the faulty logic voice. So, League of Legends features various monsters alongside humans which you can, as the summoner, utilize in battle. Therefore, it's a monster tamer. RuneScape features a summoning system in which you can use summons to fight for and with you. Therefore, it's a monster taming game. Sekiro has a special skill called Puppeteer which allows you to take control of enemies, including monsters, and have them fight for you for a short amount of time. It's a monster taming game. See where I'm going with this though? Although the lines can be blurred, I think that we can all agree that these games aren't monster taming games because of the lack of monster taming, despite there perhaps being some sort of monster taming system within the game. So what exactly does that mean and who am I to decide the line between what is and isn't part of the genre? Well, one of the problems with this genre specifically is the fact that Pokemon basically had hold of it throughout the majority of its run. And you could say that while the grip has loosened to a large degree, Pokemon still reigns as a mascot of the genre. Because of this, the community hasn't really established a unified name even for the genre. Here on the channel we refer to them as monster tamers or monster taming games, but I've seen it plenty of times where even game developers will use the terms monster catching, creature collector, monster battler, Pokemon-like, and more. As a community, if we can't even agree on the name of the genre, how are we going to agree on what exactly constitutes the lines between monster taming games and games with monster taming elements? Now, I'll be honest with you guys, I don't have the answer, and I think this is a great topic of discussion for our whole community to reflect on and decide how we're going to go about it. As a content creator, I have no problems covering games that are definitely monster taming games like Nexomon, Monster Sanctuary, Coromon, etc., but I can also dip my feet in games that have monster taming elements as well. I'm not trying to define the genre by some sort of strict guideline, rather go over various topics that you guys enjoy, uh, news, etc. I am really interested to know what you guys think about this. Where does the line get drawn? On and how can we as a community ensure that not everything is suddenly a monster taming game while also not gatekeeping against games that really should be in the genre. Again, make sure to let me know your thoughts and if you do enjoy content like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel and come join our Discord which is linked in the description. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.